And there is this uh, second part of this video about Facebook that I'm going to do. And it's really important, I feel, I have to do it because <laughs> it's quite deep, actually. I just stated in the part number one about white South African minorities, how I see one as within the borders of the South Africa in the future. And for what I suggested that in this white countries, there is more than enough place for them uh, to be accommodated. Australia, Western Europe, the United States of America, Canada, so many refugees as you take, I think it would be also uh, <clears throat> appropriate for you to accommodate the people that uh, are of your origins, in fact, that feel that uh, are so much white that want the country of their own within the South Africa and are unwilling to integrate into the South African society, therefore with the black people. I stated this in the video and it doesn't end there, just as I would anticipate it would end there, it does not. And so where the hell is it ends? Well, here. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> I just saw this Google here with this European Union flag and this and that. It uh, significates voting, you know. Uh, honestly, it's fucking scary to me when I see this flag. This flag started to spook me. It ends here with this. And you're also going to see here how I went to the Hungary to apply for political asylum. It was not only Canada and Germany and Belgium, all these political asylum procedures I've gone through. Um, you get to see it's also where is that Canada and a day? Uh, sorry, not Canada, but Hungary. Hungary. Let me see where the Hungary is. Hungary! Mr. Viktor Orban. This is a Hungary. This is where I apply for the political asylum. Right here. And it was people also from South Africa, I reported to you about, yes? Uh, this is a Budapest, beautiful Budapest, yes? Very nice. Uh, let me explain to you like this. This guy here, his name is Peter Siato. It was not only Viktor Orban, but it was on behalf of Viktor Orban, because this is a trainee from uh, Viktor Orban. His name is Peter Siarto. Uh, you see, he would hijack me from uh, Hungary. He would hijack me to foremost, to the two locations. One was this location here. This was uh, Romania. For Romania, he had other people also. Also, the people from Romania he would use. But when it comes to the Ukraine, uh, the so-called Bukovina, where they have this um, Hungarian minority I had written about, uh, he even would personally go. He would go to pick me up, deliver me there. Uh, sometimes he would be near. And he was looking to create tensions, crime, use me to hide himself behind one. He started the divide and conquer in impoverished Ukraine. Maybe this is the best example of what uh, Ukrainians especially need to watch out. Yeah. Um, 
there was this farmer I will not forget in this area here. I don't know exactly where at, but uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, let me turn the camera on, so that you get to see me. There was this Ukrainian farmer who uh, was a Hungarian, is what he claimed, of Hungarian descent. And he had this big fucking farm, you know, big ass farm. And this Hungarian, where I would be delivered to one, uh, I think it was right in the border with the Hungary. I, they, I would be delivered to the border with a Hungary and demonstrated the fence. And on, on the other side is a Hungary and this is Ukraine. And the torture would be so severe in Ukraine that I wanted to literally run through the barbed wires on the other side of... Uh, they were literally driving me insane through the torture in Ukraine in front of the border with the Hungary uh, playing with my sanity about on which side is European Union and on which side is Ukraine, on which side is the Hungary and on which side is Ukraine. So on the side where I was being killed practically on Ukrainian side, they they were pointing me out the Hungarian border. This is how it was done with the Peter Sciarto. Uh, and so I asked this uh, Ukrainian Hungarian about why is he with others, because I had enough of this bullshit. I asked them, why don't you just go to Hungary? I mean, if things are so impossible here, because that's what they did, they complain about. So why, why the fuck are you here and you don't go to, to Hungary? And you know what he stated to me? He said to me, well, he said, because... I have about 10 times big farm as if I would have in a Hungary. He said in a Hungary I would not have anything. It would be shit compared to this here. Oh, I said, I see, I see. Hmm. So now we have a problem, right? Because his farm is compared to Hungarian farmers like a fucking giant. Mac Daddy farm. Uh, but he's Hungarian and he doesn't want to be in Ukraine. That's what he deems. That's why he claimed he's a Hungarian minority from Ukraine. Angela Merkel stated me during MK Ultra that if I would have a state that the white minority, um, I don't think that she stated unwilling to incorporate or unwilling to integrate, which is the language I have used in the part number one during her NK Ultra brainwash, if I would ever state that should they return back to their origins, uh, Ukraine no longer should receive any kind of military assistance, military aid. Yes? That's <clears throat> what she stated to me, I had to acknowledge this, and for doing what I did is what I was also taught by other politicians, uh, Western politicians, that's exactly what it would take place against Ukraine, no more military assistance for you. Then it was upgraded, then it was upgraded by, it. not supposed to tell you about this yet, Angela Merkel said, But you don't tell this yet. Uh, we will have South African white minority resettled from South Africa to Ukraine. Because don't say this, because this would be a big problem in Ukraine. Um, well, uh, it, it's like this, basically. That's not true that this would be a problem in Ukraine. You see, the one who made the problem were the people like Angela Merkel. These are the people like British royals. There were people like people who just, uh, I think, worked for the Russia, to be honest. Uh, I think they were doing all these problems just to... Uh, drive Russian insane? No just to uh, 
I honestly, I removed something I was cooking outside. I honestly think to get me killed. <laughs> you see, this British humor is such that they were driving everybody schizophrenic, everybody completely paranoid. They were making, they tried to sicken, brain sicken, Polacks, Czechs, Slovaks. But they, they didn't need much. Belarus, Russians, they didn't need much to get sick. Is, most of these people already were very, very sick. The politicians. <clears throat> and also the people that these politicians have found. They had a extensive, in my opinion, record of mental illness already present before they got to meet me. And that's what they rely on. Because these are so-called influencers, if you like, they use to terrorize the rest of the society into some sort of compliance. Yeah. So, shit. Uh, what a plan. All right. Uh, I was kind of laugh about it if I was not maybe the one who created this type of plan. <laughs> you see. Uh, very, very twisted game, and it did not start in, I don't know, 2015, I don't know when was it they started with this type of proposition, they came up like in 2015, I think. Uh, no, 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 the one who started the Eastern Europe, I was the one, I, I built the Eastern Europe, I was the one who took down the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. That's why I was even more hated. That's why I was so fucking much hated by the British royals, by these politicians, by this American president, by, you know, all this cream of the Western society. You know, do looks, do fucks. I see that uh, Romanov got married two days ago in Britain. Watch that. It's some kind of a duke of some kind of, uh, I don't know what kind of duke he is. We have a lot of dukes in Britannia. And some they go a little from, they trace to Romanov. Yeah. Hot shit. Um, I was the one who created this stuff. So most of the people would not want to say anything like this because, you know, obviously because of the stuff I already have stated myself. But here is that it is not so easy. This is very, very complex, actually. And the way it worked is like this. During MK Ultra, I was acknowledged as... Uh, Somebody who just spent his life in vain, of, for nothing, basically, by the Ruskis, by the Moscovici uh, and Belgrade Milosevici, came up with idea together with the Karadzici and Mladici and all this uh, Putinici and Lavrovici and Medvedevici and before all this elite, the cream de la, de la USSR, uh, came up with idea that they are so, you know, we are USSR, we Velika Serbia, you know, us, ha, huh. like this, they were doing like that, you know, ha, huh. ha, huh. ha, yeah, me, Nobody. Drugged up, child, baby, fuck. Uh, a lot of problems. Nothing other than violence. Moving from one dot to another through nothing other than violence, I say. Nothing. But this type of behavior got a very close attention from everybody within the USSR, from the Chechens, Tajiks, Kazakhs, uh, Ukrainians and Lithuanians, Estonians, and everything in between, basically, you know, Belarusians. Unheard of mistreatment 
of the baby, actually, not the child. Novak dreamed about something about uh, children. I was not children. This shit started under Josip Brostito when I was one year of age. And with the most beautiful woman. What the fuck? A beautiful Serbian woman, a beautiful Russian woman, a beautiful Krasivo Krasivaya. And you know fucking good. You know fucking good. You like America and you like Britannia and you like Francia and you like Italia and Germany. You like them in the, you know. We have a nuclear bombs, you know. We have uh, got to the space. Oh, we tanks. We have a tanks. We have uh, uh, military. We. Uh, uh. Well, I started to fuck them back, fist with the fist. Uh, the cars. I told them, you never created one single fucking car engine ever in the Soviet Union or Yugoslavia. One car you have not created. Everything was Fiat imported. Cars, so you had West make you things. And finally, it came also to the women. And it was merciless. Uh, this Western women, I was looking for something that would not be uh, classic in a, in a Eastern Europe, and it was, you know, something that I had to because they had women. There is no doubt about it. You know, they had women. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about that stuff. But I had to find something different, and so I started to fuck them with a blonde woman, with this, with a, look how that one looks, look how this one looks. The truth is, the ladies alone figure out it was more of a makeup. You got a lot to do with the makeup and stuff like that, which in Eastern Europe they didn't have, just like a ketchup. They didn't have a ketchup. You could take a ketchup and go to Czech Republic or Slovakia, and you would, uh, you know, for a bottle of the ketchup, I was told they were buying themselves uh, I don't know what kind of stuff, I mean, all kinds of stuff that would be otherwise really expensive in the Western Europe because the money in Eastern Europe was not worth anything. Uh, it was this kind of stuff, crazy stuff like you cannot associate with these days anything. But like I said, I was born on December 9 in 1971, right? So, and so I found uh, the hot spot for them, uh, targeted. Uh, started to target their women. Their women also targeted me. Uh, Josip Brosito was the first one already as a baby. Started to make fun of my penis and stuff like that. Uh, that I'm of no good and so on. And I returned back as much as I possibly could. Uh, and when you had women that started to join this type of attitude, I started to fuck them wherever I possibly could without any mercy and spare nothing. It was a mistake. It was a bad mistake. No, it was exactly what I began to indoctrinate entire Eastern Europe to use to fuck Milosevic, to fuck Kremlin, as much as possible. Hmm. Nothing is more personal than a personal relationship you create within the family. Therefore, like intermarriage, you know, that's brutal stuff. That's brutal stuff, you know. And the Slavici, Slavici, Slavs, Slavici, I call them Slavici. Ah, fuck you, motherfuckers, you pay me. I'm not talking about the Slavic people here when I say that. I'm talking about the sick bastards from Kremlin. I'm talking about the sick bastards from Kiev. 
I'm talking about the six bastards from Warsaw, six bastards from Prague and from Ljubljana and from Zagreb and from Belgrade, you know. Nothing to do with now. We are talking about the time back when you guys were not even born to watch this shit. Or if you were born, the chances that you would see this part of the world were not really. Close to none. You couldn't even go across the fucking border if you were from the West. Now, unless you went uh, to Yugoslavia on vacation here. And you wouldn't see any of it anyways. Because people were normal. People were very normal. Whether you would go to the Poland or you would go to the Russia or you would go to Slovenia or Croatia or Serbia. If you would go out there and you would meet people, it would be people. Serbia is not normal. Serbia never was normal. But Russia was normal and... All these countries are normal, but Serbs always was something else. Maybe just because I grew up here, but that's not really the truth, because they occupied entire Yugoslavia. They were owners of the Yugoslavia. I don't know about the Russia, if the Russia was the same thing. I didn't get the same uh, opinion, I didn't get the same impression about the Russians, but it probably was the same thing. It depends on what region, what part of the world you were, and so on. In Chechnya, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, all these countries, they already were doing the stuff that was not, that was quite not okay. And so they were something special. They were blue blood. They were like, they were something. And I was not worth jack shit. I was a nobody. The so-called Slavs. Uh, My brain goes dark and blank when I think about these people. Uh, talking about people with 50 medals all over the chest, you know. Um, deluded, delusional, schizophrenic, drunks. Uh, which lost completely the sense with reality, like Josip Broz Tito, and uh, forgot all about what it was like in the war to survive. Uh, any kind of humbleness, humility, they depended on from the natives that gave them the food the shoes, the clothing, so they could wear in the winter, in the frozen, when they had to live literally inside of the forests. The danger, the stuff that people struggled with to liberate themselves from German occupation, from Italian occupation. They totally lost the touch with reality. Now they were completely different. This Slavici, they have 50 medals and they you know, and we marched back and forth in, 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 in this London Square. They even liquidated one another. People disappeared. They started to incarcerate people that were literally pertaining to World War II resistance and so on. Uh, these people completely lost the touch with reality. And the schizophrenia progressed already so much that they rejected the notion that, uh, like, like if you would mention them, uh, something like, I'm going to get married with a German girl. It would be like, it would be like completely, you know, they would want to fucking kill me. As long as I was shit. As long as I complied being shit, as long as I took this shit, it was good. And as long as I admired their beautiful Slavic ladies, it was good. But when I hit on the Slavic ladies, and I started to talk about, I don't know, whatever. Whatever women I found start to talk about that stuff, uh, just disregarding them like this. They, you know, they want to kill me. Kill me! 
kill you. We will kill you. You will kill you. Dead. Anywhere from Warsaw to Prague to Moscow to Ljubljana to uh, Belgium. There was a good uh, number of these Western ladies that liked me. And uh, the thing about it is, I knew already as a child that if something like this would ever to come to play, therefore the independence in Poland, in Czech Republic, in Slovakia, in, in Ukraine, Slovenia, Croatia, etc., Bulgaria, etc., 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 and Romania and Hungary, they also hated me. They, they all, oh, no, no, no. They also wanted to choke me for that stuff, the same shit. We will have to use interrelations now. What the fuck is the independence anyways? Well, the independence is not when you are thrown inside of the cage. When you are caged, like you put the cage, you put the bird, now you put the bird out, and you put the human inside, and you say, well, this is a Poland, and you put another cage next to that one, and you say, this is a Czech Republic, and you put another cage, also they hang from the wall, and you say, this is Ukraine, and uh, me, being a Russian, uh, so uh, let this be Slovenia, and let this be Croatia. This is not independence. Independence is when you freely choose whom you are going to mate with. The independence further is a real independence when the one you are becoming independent from is compelled to acknowledge that you have the right to intermarry, therefore engage into a very personal relationship with whomever the fuck you want. In the West, this is not such of a big deal. But in the Russia, in the Yugoslavia, it will fucking kill you. If you only think about getting married with Italian or German or French or English, any kind of woman. They lynch you, man. They fucking kill you. American. Yet. No. When I came up with that kind of a proposition, they came up with a different proposition. You will marry a black lady. You will marry Asian. You will marry whatever, but you will never marry white woman. Ever you will marry white woman. Not because it would be about the white woman, but because it was the 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 pride, the the me Slavici big man being hurt. No, 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 no. You would already think about that stuff because this is what they suggested. This is what they insisted to the British royals, to Americans, to Germans, to French, to everybody. He is the one. He is doing this. To hide all the stuff that went on that were involved against me. And uh, so I learned that there is something in particular painful to this Moscovici and Belgrade about the interrelations, the human interrelations, having the freedom, the ability to exchange uh, marital status, children with whomever you want. Our holy Slavic blood, our Slavic blood must not get dirty from uh, polluted by the blonde woman from the Germany or from the France or Italy or Britain or Scandinavia or America or whatever. Our blood is clean. This is the blood of the heroes. 
that died during the Second World War. This is the blood of the heroes whom I, Stalin, when I whistled, I sent the waves of the Slavic heroes running toward the guns just to die so they could see how glorious we are and how many of us is there and how much we are willing to pay for our sacred land. But this is the way it was. This is the reality. Was this, yes, this is the, actually the propaganda. They brainwashed the children inside the school, on the side. Very angry environment. I grew up with the type of environment. Don't even think about buying yourself Adidas or Nike. Maybe Casio, but no Adidas, no Nike, no BMW, no Mercedes, no Volkswagen, no Audi, no shit, nothing. Because it's a Nazi. I know these are not people. I know that these are not, uh, they are good, always oh, high quality. But, you see, the thing is that they remind of the Nazism, is what the Polacks, Czechs, Moskvichy, Ruski, Serbs started to explain to me. It was like this, till actually I got <sighs> Vojslav Sheshel and Karadzic and uh, the cream, like Milosevic, uh, I got them into the Audi A6. They were driving the Stoyadin, you know, Sto Stoenka, Stoyadin. And I told them, I don't want to drive this shit. And they told me, what do you think about this? We're going to kill you. And I said to them, well, you know, this car is shit. And the same thing was with uh, Josip Brostito. Josip Brostito would have me inside of the Mercedes. And they wanted me to drive myself in a Stoyadin and in this whatever cars they had, including what I actually rated even as a rape, as an attempted rape, was a Fiat 500. I don't know what it was, 500 or 750, whatever, the Fitchko, the smallest one. Uh... I got used to this lifestyle, Mercedes, you know, uh, stuff that the president was using. I like that as a child, but you learn quickly. As a child, you'll be surprised how quickly you start to pick up what is good and what is not good. I became actually so good at that stuff that the presidents would, would ask me and would consider as a compliment if I would like their watches and stuff like that, cars and so on, even wives. You know, wives, they like that, especially if I would give them a compliment that I was a, such an evil child, I guess. But here's the thing. It was not about the Asian women. It was not about the black woman. It was about completely other issues. It was about to keep Poland, Ukraine and Hungary and Romania and Slovenia and Croatia and Lithuania and Estonia and uh, Lithuania, and the, 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 any country, and Chechnya, and Tajikistan, and the Kazakhstan, and everybody, absolutely everybody, in dark. Because at the same time, they started to buy themselves uh, German cars. You know? uh, at the same time, uh, they would have a deep compassion for the German ladies, and for, you know, uh, it was just like closeted stuff, and it was a reserve for the Serbs and for the Russians. And it was so closeted, it would be like a joke that you would step into the bar. It's a joke that... Uh, uh, see, I'm going to try to get that.
Well, the lady has to take, excuse me, it's not in a, in a bad sense. I'm just trying to give you an idea about what kind of attitude this was. It's like the lady would take, put the gloves on her hand to put the penis inside of her mouth. You understand me what I'm trying to say? This is the type of attitude they had. They reserve this to themselves, these things, and they acknowledge that in front of us, at least, and in front of even their own people, wives and so on, is something dirty. No, 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 yet, yet. This is Svetaya uh, Slavanska Kri, you know, the holy Slavic blood. Yeah, we don't dirt this. You know, colonizer, Nazi, this and that. So. Uh, things so interesting that I found myself actually even observing all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I found some American ladies, or a white ladies, in Japan, intermarrying over there, and in China with the Chinese, and in America, and so on. Personally, I liked the Asian ladies, but yes... The stuff that I told you about, it uh, clouded my mind. I, because of what they stated to me, you will, you know, you will. I was like, fuck you, you will not, you shall not. And that's how it all started, this racial stuff. This is how they were deepening since childhood. From one issue to another, they were building their own stuff, like uh, cubes inside of the head, the idea. They started to create the human being based on their views, the way they want this to be seen. You know? So, <clears throat> what is here for me to say? Um... People that are unwilling to integrate in South Africa should not have permission to enter Ukraine. It is simple as this. Now, however, if you're looking for a relationship in Ukraine and you happen so to fall for Ukrainian or for the Ukrainian girl, then in the case, I'm going to give you a blessing. Because the truth is that we don't want that border, you know, the fence. Remember the fence I talked to you about? We don't want this kind of issues anywhere. Nobody wants this kind of issues anywhere in the world. And we also, I'm not a Ukrainian, but I know Ukrainian people pretty good. I don't want to grow, grow any kind of neo-Nazism in Ukraine. Ukraine as an independent nation is the nation. I outlined the two flags that I like, you know. You know, and so um, I outlined two, two, I will outline you two flags that I like, that I... If it's going to serve me the internet enough... Uh, one is this one here. I like it, this bright colors, uh, kind of a strange, isn't it? Like this, a little, looks like a little bit, maybe even Spanish, uh, but the colors that you can find also in India and also in China, in Asia, a uh, different kind of flag. We want to have a capacity, okay, I'm not Ukrainian, but I assume, to intercommunicate and do business unlimited with absolutely everybody because it applies the same as to the Russians that try to block us from having the relationship with, uh, you know, with, uh, with a Western woman, with a Western man, um, you know, we also reserve the right to do business with the Indian, with the China and Japan and uh, Asia, you know, with whatever country we feel like, you know, we we want to 
as an independent nation, as an independent people here in Eastern Europe, not be restrained, restricted to anybody. That is the goal, that is the very core idea about the independence. You know, you understand me? I know something about independence more than anybody in this world does, because I have gone through the stages I witness to you right now. Uh, so, where that be, wherever nation that might be, we, the people, have to reserve the right to integrate, to mingle, to intermix with whomever the fuck we want to do. Whether that be from whatever country, whether that be from Italy, from France, from Britain, from America, and so on. Yet we are open to, I'm not going to say possibilities, but to assistance to the people. This isn't about blocking and labeling people as good as dead white people in South Africa and something like that. No, this is to create interrelations, friendship build something, finally this is to let the South African white people, white minority also, to let them know that you're not alone, you're not going to be left behind by anybody. For as long as you want to be a part of something you're located in, and you want to build a human relationship, I think pretty much every country around the world is going to be opened to do business with you, especially Ukraine. But this is not something that we are fighting the war in Ukraine uh, for the greater German Reich or something like that. So that uh, it would be something like this. This is not the case. This is called, it's called independence. It's called national sovereignty. Is to basically give the right to absolutely every individual, even in the country within the system, to have the right to decide about how he's going to do the stuff as long as he does not obstruct and cause problems for other people within that system, within the country, you shall have the right to do, based on your decisions, to marry with whomever that is that you want. And really nobody, I tell you, has the right, should never allow anybody to control you, to restrain you, to put some kind of mental barriers and so on. Exactly what I told you about this video, this is what... Every human being should be sovereign. You should always reserve yourself sovereignty. Certain things you should not allow anybody to, uh, you know, to play with. You have the right to choose. And today, the struggle, the change that you are making, the difference that you are making in Ukraine, you, this is exactly the reason. This is why you are making that difference. This is what you are doing right now. This is the difference you make. These are your decisions. This is what is going to shape your life. It's going to give you the ability to intermingle and decide and develop with whomever the hell you want. This is why the people are dying in Ukraine. And this is where I hope Ukraine, direction of Ukraine is going to go in the future. As far as away as possible, as far as from those that deem uh, have a special privilege, have a special authority to, I'm not going to say to coordinate one, but to administer one through some kind of uh, humiliation, spitting on one, uh, insults, uh, derogatory stuff that, uh, you know, um, I hope I did make myself clear about these issues. Uh, Ukraine must not become enslavement of any system, not of the not of those against whom not against the evil against whom people have pledged will fight to the bitter end for the freedom for their freedoms and not against those that, uh, toward whom they have turned to, to integrate with, uh, to become their slaves. Ukraine must not become slave, not, not the one, not the other. Uh, just like every other country around the world, this is the same in France, in Germany, in Italy, 
you will go to ask Italian people the same thing. They feel the same like I do. Or French people or Spanish people or wherever you would go. It's the same thing. Uh, people, the national sovereignty, the national independence is exactly what I stated to you. They learned so much about national sovereignty from me, talking about European royals, that I'm going to say they knew fucking nothing about life till they met me. They didn't even know why the fuck they existed till they met me. So this is going to be part number two about the Facebook, about this, the way they, they did this. They created their own profile here on the uh, under the Facebook, which is completely identical. I'm telling you, this shit is identical. You see it? It's totally, totally identical to the other profile of this stuff here. Look at it. This is crazy. I mean, I've not seen anything like this yet. I mean, logging myself as a as a somebody else in another account, it shows me that this is totally fucked up. National sovereignty, ladies and gentlemen, this is where when you have the ability, the right to decide about your most uh, personal issues, such as this marriage, intermingling, the right to job, whatever you want to immigrate to. Uh, you understand me, what I'm saying? Uh, never, ever allow anybody to go based on your, uh, on your blood to literally police you, to tell you who you are legible to marry with. Uh, and this and that, and we mingle and intermarry, and we don't intermarry in this. Fuck you, mother. This is not uh, national sovereignty. This is bullshit. This is a slavery, and that is a road to the self-extermination. Whoever follows that kind of road is bound to be destroyed. Uh, I will go now and we'll use this link. This is the prettiest. And you can see here, this is the one here. We're going to use this one here. I have gone through all this. I tested all this stuff, and I'm, t I'm telling you that when it came to the women, and I started to favor Western women over the Eastern women, and I started to return them back. Um, no, I, I, was, I started to do the same. Unfortunately, this stuff did go too far with me. Everything I did not have correct. I, I it just, it, it went too far with it, this stuff. Um, it, it was just a really, really bad stuff. It did go far too far with it. Uh, and um, how can I say? Uh, I, uh, I, I demonstrated how the Elon Musk and Peter Thiel, uh, they started to imitate the Russians with their clothing and stuff, and, and even the facial haircuts and stuff like this. You got to go over my blog to read that stuff. Well, you know, the thing is, I didn't, I didn't profile anymore only uh, uh, Eastern, uh, you know, uh, but I, 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 I started to take on uh, because of the stuff, because they wanted to do business like this. You know, they were, you know, for whomever, you know, the way they, the way they did this stuff, you know, um, if I assaulted somebody from the West based on the facial features and it was enough to assault one based on his looks that resembled somebody uh, from Russia or from Serbia, uh, these people from the West were eligible for a huge discounts and financial awards from their own governments and in some cases even for inter-trade. So the German government and uh, all these governments, they were really, really looking to find people that would that were involved in MKUltra, for whom Putin, uh, Lavrov, Medvedev, uh, and then you have all this Milosevic, this uh, uh, Vucic, all these people, uh, they would deem that somehow they match them physically. 
you know, because they felt that it's going to be something that's going to anger me and stuff like this. And that's how they started to, you know, they took advantage of this corruption and so on and so forth. It did not stop with the woman. Uh, I started to, uh, I stood up against this kind of stuff and I, and I attacked all kinds of people because of that kind of stuff. Because, because I did not allow anybody to tutor me, to teach me about what, what was done to me, what, what these criminals started to do to me beginning the age one. Nobody is above God. Nobody is above God. God exists and nobody is above God. This is shit. That's why I have no respect for this shit. I have no respect. I need no res respect for this shit. It's not people. It's a shit. Talking also about you, Merkel. So, whatever decision you might make in respect to Ukraine, whether you are going to assist one or you're not going to assist one, um, what can I say? Uh, I wish you the best of luck.